This is a 2016 Corvette Stingray. Can do 0 to 60 in 3.7 seconds. Has a top speed of 187 miles an hour. But what I'm going to talk about today is the most important thing, and that is its quirks and features. So anyhow, welcome to the One Frame Four Wheels channel. It's the Gear Bear here, like always. And while I could make a video talking about how nicely styled it is, or uh, you know how fast this car is, there's so many other things that people have probably already done, and I'll probably do sometime down the road. But I wanted to go ahead and make a video in honor of the great automotive YouTube this god, and that is Dougie Demuro, Daddy Dougie. Um, that should be a hashtag. Um, but anyhow, you know, I just, he's one of the people, he and Street Speed 717, um, if you don't know who they are, uh, which you should, but uh, go ahead and search in the YouTube uh, search box. Um, they really are the people that got me interested in wanting to make car videos on YouTube, and just doing YouTube in general. And uh, anyhow, I thought it'd be really fun, um, since I've owned this car now for about two, or I guess a year and a half, um, I've noticed over the time uh, a lot of uh, strange quirks and features about this car. Uh, nothing too bad or anything. It's not bad. It's just quirky and, you know, kind of funny. And so I figured, you know, this would be a really good time to go ahead and make a video illustrating those. Sorry, where was I before I was rudely interrupted by my family coming home into their house? How dare they? Um, but anyhow, uh, getting back, uh, I wanted to really just make a video uh, to be funny, but also uh, to go ahead and showcase some of the weird quirks and features of this car. Because it is kind of weird. You know, it's a mass-produced vehicle, but there's a couple things that I think it just need little styling cues. And then there's one thing in particular that I just think is really funny um, that, you know, Chevy missed or they just reused from another car didn't care. Um, which we'll go ahead and talk about later. But yeah, so this video is really in honor of Doug DeMuro because, uh, you know, I'm a big fan of his. And, uh, yeah, he's really, you know, one of the people that inspired me to do this. And also, his videos are just really funny, and they're entertaining, and you learn something that you didn't know before you watched the video, and today, you guys are going to do that too. So let's go ahead and get started. So starting with the exterior of this car, you know, it's very stylishly designed with all these really creased body lines. That's not too in particular, especially in exotic-looking cars, you know, um, Lamborghinis and things like that. You know, a lot of them have that, so that's very typical. And just in general, the car is very... Um, it's in keeping with the rest of the trends that all the sports cars have been doing lately. Uh, but one thing I want to point out is the headlights. Let's go ahead and zoom in a little bit. Looking a little closer at the headlight, it looks just like a normal headlight. It's got lights in it. What else do you expect from a headlight? But one thing that I thought was really cool, and it has nothing to do with the headlight itself, except, um, or how it functions, but if you can notice right here, do you see that? It's a little Corvette logo. I thought that was kind of cool, you know. You know, putting in these little um, little Easter egg logos or symbols or whatever, uh, it's become a little bit more common lately. Uh, Jeeps have been doing it for quite a while now. But I, I like those little tiny touches. And it doesn't just stop with the headlights on this car either. There's little Easter eggs all around the vehicle. For example, if we zoom down here onto the wheels, it's not the Corvette symbol, but it is the Corvette word uh, nicely embossed in the rim. And if we go ahead and uh, let's go towards the back of the car, You'll see that unlike most plebeian cars, the rear gradient on the glass, instead of being just like plain lines, actually is a whole bunch of little Corvette logos. And that is a pretty nifty little feature. It's not really, you um, know, just functional. It's not necessary, but it definitely looks very cool. And I think that's a very neat little quirk. And when you step into your Corvette, look what greets you. Another Corvette logo. And that's not the last one. I swear, there are a lot of Corvette logos in this car. It's like they want you to know you're driving a Corvette. I guess you didn't know. Maybe you bought the car and you just didn't even realize what the hell you bought. But let's come around to the front again. And uh, I popped the hood and, uh, you know, it says Corvette all over the car. Uh, I see nothing in particular except, oh, what's that? It's a Corvette logo. Boom, you're driving a Corvette. Bet you didn't know that when you bought your Corvette. Yeah. Now, moving along from the Corvette logos, prominent all over this vehicle, uh, let's move on to something different. Uh, how about getting into this car? And I also want to point out that this door going up like this, that was me. Um, that's a vertical door kit, so that can, can be omitted from the quirks and features of uh, the Corvette. It's a quirk and feature of this car, but I want to talk about now how to get into a Corvette. Um, which is a little bit different than typical cars, but not totally uncommon. Okay, so you're at the side of your Corvette, and you're thinking, huh, there's no door handles. There's this little notch thing. What do I do? Let's go ahead and stick your hand in that notch. That's step one. Step two, I'm going to go ahead and three-finger this. 
Uh, that's what fits. And uh, go ahead, so step two, go ahead and put pressure pulling out on the door, and you're gonna feel a little pad back there. Use your fingers and push up against that pad, and you're gonna hear a little electronic-y sound. That's the electronic latch opening. And then in a normal Corvette, you would just go ahead and pull it wide open, and that's it. And in this car, because like I said, I've installed a vertical door kit, it's a little different, uh, we just go ahead and lift up to open it. But that is how you get inside a C7 Corvette, just in case you didn't know. It doesn't have, you know, a retractable door handle like a Tesla or something. Um, it doesn't have like that weird push-in thing that the GTRs have. This has its own little unique feature because I guess that's the thing now is cars need to have some special way to get in. Um, it's like a secret code that only the owners or people that watch these videos will know. So you're probably thinking this car is pretty technologically advanced. It doesn't even have door handles. So you're thinking, hmm, how do you lock the car? Well, you can use the little key fob button if you want, but this actually has passive entry and exit which means that when you walk up to the car, it senses the key fob and is ready to be unlocked as soon as you press the little uh, pad there. And when you walk away and shut the door, I'm walking away, give it a few seconds. Faster, faster, faster. And look, it locks itself. I had to do absolutely nothing. So on the topic of getting into a C7 Corvette, you might have noticed that there was no door handles and there were no keyholes. Well, there's one keyhole in this car and it's at the very back of the car. Let's go ahead and go over there now. So let's say you're trying to get in your car and uh, the battery's dead. And you know, all these cars nowadays all have the passive entry, um, keyless, blah, blah, blah. So you know, there's not a key that you normally use to get in the car. Well, if the battery goes dead, this is gonna be useless to you, right? Because it's not gonna be able to get into the car anymore. Um, it's not gonna be able to sense it and all the electronics aren't gonna open the door for you. So what you do is you take your little key fob, you press this button and OMG, you've got a physical key. Now what you'll go ahead and do is feel underneath here, there's a light and there's the button to release the hatch. Well, there's actually only one physical keyhole on this car, believe it or not, and it's up in here. So what you'll do to get into this car is hunched down. This will be great if it's raining outside, right? Hopefully, uh, hopefully your battery doesn't go dead very often. And then you'll then niggle this thing into the hole like so. See, it sticks there. Go ahead and turn it. Oh, and look at that, the hatch opened. Now, you've got your one physical keyhole to get into your car, and that's how you do it. And since we're already at the back of the car, let's go ahead and continue with once again another quirk of getting into the C7 Corvette. Um, and this is really going to be a quirk that you'll only find on vehicles that have an electronic motor that um, unlatches the doors rather than like a physical, um, you know, pulley thing that most cars have on the inside. Um, so back here, hey, your car battery dies once again. It's got lots of battery problems, I guess, with this car in this imaginary world that we're living in. But yeah, Chevy has thought this through. They know that you're not going to want to crawl through here after undoing your hatch here, right? So they've got a brilliant idea. They've got this little latch, or not a latch, but a little pulley system that runs all the way to the front driver door. And what you do is I'm going to go ahead and pull on this, and you'll see the door up there. Watch. Ready for this? Ready? Ready? Boom. That little guy opens your front door. So now all you have to do is use your key, come back here, pop the hatch open, then come in here, pull this, then open your door, and they have cleverly figured out how to be able to get into your car if the battery's dead with all these electronic ways to get into your car disabled. That is good thinking. And coming from the back of the C7, once again, I just wanted to illustrate how gargantuan the cargo area is back here, which is really surprising, I think, to most people, because when you think of a sports car, you're not really thinking practicality or cargo space, but it has a lot of it, and I want to demonstrate it now by putting my body in here. So uh, here we go. And don't worry, I have a little key fob to release myself afterwards. See you on the other side. Ta-da! And I'm not even squished. Okay, and one last quirk from the back of the car, and then we'll move on to the inside, and it's this. So I have a 1LT uh, trim level. That's pretty much the very, the cheapest base um, level that you can get on a Stingray Corvette. 
Um, and so it didn't even come with these, but in every other trim level, you get these little fabric flappy things as your rear cargo cover. And I do have to say for a car, I know it only starts at 55,000, which is good for, it's a good value for what you're getting as far as performance and stuff. I do think that this is, albeit, a, you know, a, it works, right? Okay. It, it does exactly what it needs to do. It covers the back of the car. But to be honest, it's just so chintzy looking. I mean, they couldn't have thought of any other retractable anything to cover up the back of the cargo area. I mean, this looks, I don't know. What do you guys think? I think it looks kind of chintzy myself, but considering everything else with the car that I do love, it's a small little thing that I think, you know, they could have done better but um, I, it's kind of quirky to me. I don't know. Maybe you guys can tell me what you think in the comments below, but I think it's a little chintzy, especially because this same thing comes in a car, um, this car, when it's over $100,000, you know, a 3LT Z06. Um, and I think it's kind of, you know, it's a bit quirky that uh, this was the best solution they could come up with. But what do you think? Oh, and I forgot to mention, Corvette logo. And since I have the hood open already, and we were just talking about this beautiful little Corvette logo, um, just in case you didn't know you're driving a Corvette, um, I also wanted you guys, I wanted to mention uh, something that only a Corvette owner would probably ever notice, uh, definitely, and it has to be the right conditions. I'm going to go ahead and post a photo now, um, talking about, um, you know, when, you're, when it's frosty outside, um, you'll notice um, early in the morning, at least I did, that because of that Corvette logo, how it's got a little bit less um, insulation where it's cut in, you know, to make the logo present, um, that means that there's less insulation in that spot. What it does is that when it's cold outside and you get frost on the outside, under the right conditions, you'll actually get a little Corvette logo showing on the outside of your hood. Um, you know, just the difference in condensation um, in that area versus the rest of the hood that has the extra insulation on the inside. Um, so I thought that was, that's definitely a quirky thing of the car. And that's something, I owned this car for two years and I've only seen that like twice. Um, so I bet you most people haven't seen that, especially since a lot of people probably park these cars in a garage where I don't very often. Um, so yeah, that's a little quirk and uh, a feature, I guess. It's, a, it's an extra logo, a little extra design element. It's a cool little um, a stylistic thing that you don't even have to add on to your car. It's already built in. You just gotta, you know, have the right conditions for it, right weather. And coming from the front of the C7 Corvette once again, I wanna point out something a little funky with the lights. I did say that the, the headlights were normal and they are. Uh, but one thing I want to notice is uh, this is what the headlights look like with the daytime running lights on. They've got this really nice little shaped LED thing, and that looks great. The problem, and this is a problem that um, I really don't like with a lot of modern cars, actually, and that is where they turn off the daytime running light on the side of the car where you have the blinker on. I'm going to show you that now. This is what it looks like when the, I, right now I have the driver's side uh, blinker on, and you'll notice it cuts out the daytime running light on that side when that's on. And I understand that they do this to improve visibility and whatnot uh, for the blinker so people can actually see that you're blinking. That's great. But I hate it because it makes the car look like someone just punched it and knocked out its eye. And now it's bruising or something or it's oozing out orange blood. Um, and that's not cool. I don't really like the way that looks. Um, so that's a little quirk of modern cars, not just the C7 Corvette, but it is present on this car. And I don't really like it. Another cool feature of the C7 Corvette is the fact that it actually has functional vents. That's like my biggest pet peeve. I know Doug hates that as well when cars have vents all over the place that are just there for looks or absolutely nothing. Sometimes they even have plastic behind them and that's stupid, um, you know, because people know that's fake and then, you know, it's just like you're a poser. But this is actually a functional vent to help let air funnel up through and out. And back here, that's an actual functional vent. Uh, I believe it goes down to cool the diff or the something, I'm not really sure, but it does something that's functional. The one on the other side is not functional. You can actually see if I walk around. There's plastic in here, uh, so that's dumb. But uh, yeah, that's actually functional. I think these are fake. But at least this car has some functional vents, and that I do approve of. All right, so moving along to the inside of the car, don't fret. The quirks don't end on the outside of the car. There's plenty of them in here. And you know, like I said earlier, I think, I think I said it earlier, um, you know, there's not a lot of bad things about this car. There's just a lot of funny things. Um, but let's go ahead and get started. Let's get started with a really obvious thing. Um, it's not really like too quirky, but it's a cool feature anyways. And that feature is 
the secret James Bond compartment. Boom, that is pretty cool. Um, you know, it's actually fairly roomy. I can get my whole hand back there. You know, I put glasses and stuff, and on Amazon you can find a little shelf thing that goes in here. But you know, not a lot of cars have a retractable screen that has secret storage space behind it. And I have to say, that was pretty clever of Chevy to do um, because, you know, they definitely tried to find as much storage space as possible in the car. You know, there's little map pockets in the doors. Um, there's a little cubby over here for some change or whatnot. Um, the cup holders we'll get to, those are pretty shitty. And then this is like super non-existent. I mean, look how shallow that is. That's almost nothing. But that, that was a good idea. Kudos for Chevy. Um, kudos for, you know, utilizing that space really well. And it's very cool because you had a little motor and you made it secret. That is neat. So now another feature about this car that I absolutely hate is the cup holders. These things are so shallow. I don't have a drink right now, but I just want you guys to see, like, here's, I'm a, I'm a normal guy, and look at where, look how deep that is. That's not even, what do you put in here? I don't understand what the hell they were thinking. I mean, I guess, I know they're limited because, you know, that's like the transmission tunnel and stuff down there. Um, but, I mean, raise up part of the center console or something. I have no idea, but this sucks. And this little thing, this plastic thing, doesn't even fit in there that night. So if you've got, like, a big gulp or something, um, I mean, this thing just, like, flops around. This is, like, that's so bad. It's That cup holder is like, probably, like, the worst feature of this car, honestly. Um, whoever's job it was to design that, boom, that's, that's a downer, okay? No. That's not good. This is an American car. You need big cup holders that hold your big 64 ounce, you know, big gulper when you have your road soda with you or something. You know, you don't want to spill your beer when you're driving. Um, but yeah, that that's kind of annoying. Um, and you know, that's a weird quirk that, especially in an American car, we usually have a million cup holders and they're usually plenty big for, you know, you practically put a bucket of you know, soda in some, uh, some cars. Uh, but this car definitely... Um, the cup holders are a downer. That's a negative. So the next thing I'm going to show you guys really is a quirk, and it's something that I bet a lot of C7 owners may have never even realized because no one reads these things, right? Um, it's up here. It's the little uh, airbag warning, and I want you guys to just look at this for a minute. Look at that photo and look what it's talking about. It's talking about that if you've got a child, pretty much don't put their car seat in the front seat. Put them in the back seat. Well, there's one problem. This car's a coupe, and I'm pretty sure they didn't reuse these um, these uh, sun visors from any other car because they're pretty thin and they look like they've been made for this car, but I could be wrong. But they definitely reused that sticker because like I said earlier, this is a coupe, and that means there's no back seats, guys. Um, so yeah, that's definitely something I bet a lot of uh, C7 owners may not have even noticed before, but that really is funny that uh, GM let that one slide on through, and maybe they thought people wouldn't notice, or maybe they didn't even realize that this doesn't really apply to this car. Um, I think it's pretty funny that, uh, yeah, that they have that in a coupe. Um, I don't know, maybe they reused it from a Camaro or something, but that's definitely, that's a quirk. So kind of taking a look around the inside of my C7 Corvette, I got to thinking about how I talked earlier about the plethora of little Corvette logos, little cross flags, or it saying Corvette or something, all throughout the outside of the vehicle. Well, that continues, so why don't you guys go ahead and come inside and I'll show you that. So the first Corvette logo that might grab your attention when you come inside the C7 Corvette is the one you see when you close the door. So there's nothing actually on the door, but I'm gonna go ahead and close it, and then go ahead and take a look at these screens. Wow. Look at that. Look at that. Now, I know that Doug DeMuro hates these really obnoxiously long um, little startup screens uh, that show up pretty much in every modern car that has a lot of screens in the front. But I do have to say, it looks pretty cool. Um, but yeah, you definitely, it says Corvette along the, um, the main instrument cluster. It's not there anymore. I wonder if I can get it if I open the door up. Oh, there we go. See, it says Corvette when you open the door. That looks really nice. And then when I closed it earlier, it's not going to do it again. Um, but it kind of, the flag uh, kind of s swooped over into this screen and then it had the Corvette cross flag logo. And that's, I like it. I know Doug doesn't really like it a lot, but I think it's kind of cool, but it is more Corvette logos. And since we're talking about logos, let's go ahead and start uh, our count. So we've got one there. Uh, it said Corvette there. That was two. It had the cross flags there. That was three. 
Uh, there's it says Corvette there and there's a flag there so that's a four and I think we're good on the inside of the car here um, I got my little hat back there that's got a flag on it so I guess that counts not really um, and you can kind of see the cross flag back there on the uh, little hatch cover which I showed earlier which that is optional so it's actually not that many logos in here but they definitely want you to know that you're driving a Corvette um, also as a side note I don't have it but I think it's kind of quirky it's a little fun uh, little thing they add but if you get the Z06 uh, this plaque here because the Z06 is not a Stingray so it doesn't say Corvette Stingray it actually says 640 horsepower and I think like how much torque or whatever uh, the Z06 has. But I think it's pretty funny that, uh, you know, just in case on those cars when you're driving along, um, if you're not sure how much horsepower you have, you just look at your little plaque and it'll tell you. Um, so that's a feature. Moving along, we have the car. I have it in the on position right now. Let's go ahead and look at that. And I just want to point out that in this car, um, so if you've got the radio on, I'm going to turn this down before it turns really loud. Uh, so, you know, that's what the radio looks like or whatever. You go ahead and hold this button down, the power button. Look what you can look at, a Corvette logo. So if you're just driving around and you're really focused on driving, you know, just really, you know, no distraction, there's no radio, just focused on driving. This is what it looks like when I'm driving, Rawr, angry. Um, but I, you know, I don't want to be distracted by the radio, but I really want to look at this Corvette logo while I'm driving. Can I go like this? And it's like, do, 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 do. Oh, Corvette logo, mm, driving a Corvette. Um, let's go ahead and, you know, you've got that Corvette logo to look at. Um, but, you know, one other little feature um, that a lot of people that have these cars, I know this is starting to, this is starting to veer away from Quarks and just go into like a review of a C7 Corvette. But um, I, I, I'll go back to Quarks, but I do want to point out a feature that a lot of people might not know about the C7 Corvette is that, you know, regardless if you're on this little like off screen or if you've got the radio on, um, no matter what, oops, let me turn that off because I like to look at the Corvette logo. Um, but if you go ahead and press on the clock up here, nope, guess not. Okay, maybe it does have to be on. Oh, there we go. See, my car proving me wrong. It's gonna get it. Um, so I guess if you're on the radio, and you press the clock, uh, you can come in here to set your clock, but also you can just drive around like this. If you, for some reason, want a digital analog looking clock, there you go. That's a quirk of the C7 Corvette. Beautifully mixing timeless looks with technology. Mm, yeah, does that work? So nowadays, a lot of cars, especially you know higher end cars, they have lots of different driving modes. It's not very uncommon. Here's my little uh, mode selector switch, and you can see down here, you know, it tells you different modes. You've got track, uh, let's see, sport, tour. That's fine. Oh, what's this? Eco. Yes, this car has an eco mode. This is a 460 horsepower car, V8, 6.2 liters, and it's got an eco mode. And I just want to say, you know, if we scroll down here, I'm on my little fuel thing here. Let's see. This car has that much power, and yeah, my average is only 21 right now because, uh, you know, I've been driving around the city, but I can actually get consistently about 30 miles a gallon if you're not just going crazy uh, on the freeway and stuff. Uh, I think that's pretty cool. Uh, that is, it's a very cool feature. It is a bit quirky because people don't expect that in a sports car. I mean, no one thinks, you know, Corvette, that's going to be like my most fuel efficient vehicle, uh, but it is. So that's my little quirk uh, with the engine. And especially so, people don't expect, especially in a Corvette or any sports car, that there would be a cylinder deactivation mode, and that's what's helping me achieve uh, these great MPG values, um, is the fact that on the highway, it'll drop down to four-cylinder mode, and if you've got an automatic, there's no way to stop that even. They've got that like built in. The only way you can, I guess, uh, bypass that is if you start using the manual paddle shifters or go into the manual mode in here. Um, but yeah, um, or at least on the manuals, if you, just, I think it's only in the eco mode where it'll do the cylinder deactivation. But if you've got an auto Corvette C7, uh, it'll pretty much drop into four cylinder mode whenever it feels like it. And there's nothing you can do about it, um, which I think is interesting uh, because this is a, you know, a sports car after all. It's not really, when you think of a sports car, you're not thinking of something that's trying to be efficient, but this car is, and it's actually a pleasure to drive. Um, it's actually very very fluid when it shifts in between four and eight cylinder mode. Um, you can hear the difference, but it's not really obtrusive or anything. And I, I like it actually. It's very cool that I can have a, a very fast car that's also efficient and doesn't hurt my pocketbook. So that's cool. 
And since we're on the topic of modes, I want to go ahead and direct ourselves back to the digital instrument cluster. And you'll see here, this is touring mode. And I've made a video, I'll pop up a little link up here somewhere if you want to know more about how to configure all this stuff. But one thing I always found interesting was on tour mode. And when you get on the tour mode, the first screen that shows your speed in the center, you get all this nice data here on the side. And that's great. What's funny is that if you use the arrow key down in every single other uh, screen on tour mode, you get a picture of your Corvette. Nothing else helpful. You go through all of these and it's just a little picture of your Corvette. Because if you bought a Corvette and you're driving your Corvette and you're messing with your screen in your Corvette, you might not know you're driving a Corvette. But if you look at that, now you know. And you can look at your pretty little car as you're driving your pretty little car. Wow, thanks GM. And since we're already looking at the digital instrument cluster, I'm not gonna go into it too much because I've already made the video about it, but I think that is actually one of my most favorite features is the fact that you can you know, choose from three different modes. It looks very cool. And it's definitely, it's a neat little toy. Um, and it just, you know, it looks cool. Everyone that has driven the car says, wow, it's a really cool display. And I let them pick, you know, whatever one they want to look at when they're driving, you know, tour, sport, track, whatever. A lot of people really like the hockey puck look. So, you know, usually we're on that one. Uh, but that's a very neat feature. And I enjoy that one the most probably. Well, besides how fast the car is, it's one of the, one of the tech features that I really like of the car. Ooh, this is neat. So looking under the performance tab on the digital instrument cluster, they've got a nice little display that tells you if your tires are warm. And while I'm thinking they probably have this for people that race their cars, and I don't really do that, so it's not pertinent to me, if you're driving on a cold day, it might be nice to know if your tires are warm. So I think that's kind of a cool feature. So something else that I find strange with the C7 Corvette, and this is for all the models, the whole range, is the fact that this car has pretty bad uh, blind spots. You know, here I'm driving and I go to look and uh, I see nothing. I've got a little porthole, but you know, you really can't see too much out of that. Uh, you know, if you have just your mirrors right, you can see pretty good, but you know, that's a pretty bad blind spot. Guess what they don't offer as any option? A blind spot monitor. Why? To save weight? I have no idea. But uh, that definitely is something that I would have liked, and I definitely would have got that option because, you know, I set my mirrors pretty properly, I think. Um, but definitely, there's been at least a couple times in the last, like, year and a half I've owned this car um, that I've almost kind of pulled into someone. Oops. Um, you know, this on the freeway, you know, it's busy, it's hard to see, you know, you're trying to, you know, squeeze into a spot. And uh, yeah, definitely for a $55,000 car, I think it's a little odd that they don't even offer a blind spot monitor. And yet another cool feature of the C7 Corvette, which I'm not going to go into too much detail because I've already made a video on this as well, but going into the engine sound management, the fact that you can go ahead and change the sound of your exhaust based on what driving mode you're in, or you can lock it into whatever one you like the best, that's a pretty cool feature. And I'll go ahead and put a link up here somewhere um, on a video that I've done about this already. Um, but I think it's a very cool feature. Uh, you know, once again, I think other cars can do this too. Uh, but you're not going to see this in your everyday vehicle. So people that, you know, drive a Camry every day or something, uh, you know, might not know that stuff like this exists. And I think it's a very cool feature. And it's nice because you can have a loud exhaust when you want it. And then if you're leaving your house at four in the morning, you can have a stealthy exhaust, um, which is a nice option. Okay, so another quirk of the C7 Corvette is its valet mode, and that in itself is not a very quirky. Lots of cars have valet modes. You know, you don't want your, your valet driving crazy. So we're gonna go into it. I click valet. Let's go ahead and uh, just put in a, oops, one, 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 one. Sure, that looks good. Gotta do it twice. You don't wanna get the wrong code, right? Lock. Okay, and now the valet mode is working. We go over here and it locks your electronic um, glove box here. Oh, that's another quirk. The fact that this is actually, when you press this, you can hear a little electronic uh, mechanism. This is actually just a button, you know, doing a, an electronic release that go ahead and open this. Uh, so that's kind of cool. But what I want to get to is when you're in valet mode, you see here in the center here that it says your audio is off because when the valet is driving your C7 Corvette, how dare they listen to music? I'm not exactly sure what GM was thinking. Maybe they just wanted to turn off the whole radio thing because, you know, you don't want the valet, you know, changing your presets. Ugh, hate that when they do that all the time. Um, but what I do find funny is that I'm gonna change hands. Uh, so you can't, you know, they can't listen to your radio, right? However, look down here at the mode. I can still change mode. 
Now, if anyone else knows any different, because I haven't, I feel like it's still is functional. Maybe it's just showing me different modes. But the fact that they went through all the effort, like they got the locked glove box, that's great. They got the audio turned off, whatever, that's fine. But you don't disable the driving modes that let you drive the car like a freaking maniac when you don't understand how to drive a car if you're 16 in a valet or something. I don't know what the rules are for valets. But that boggles my mind that they got all this taken care of. The one job they forgot was the driving mode. Like that's like, if the valet is driving my car, I don't care if they have the radio on, you know, listening to whatever the hell they want to listen to. You know, I don't care. I don't want them going in my glove box, I guess, but I don't care about the audio. I think that was the funniest thing is like, they turn off the audio, but then the valet can go ahead and drive it in track mode. No, we ain't having that. But yeah, so this was my little video talking about all the little quirks and features of the C7 Corvette. And whether you own one of these, or maybe this is a dream car for you, or whatever, or you're just curious, I hope that you guys learned something new, and I hope that it kind of surprised you guys that being a mass-produced American car, the C7 Corvette, in all of its forms, actually does have a lot of quirks and features, a lot more than I bet you expected. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys really enjoyed this video, and if you did, go ahead and give it a big thumbs up, and subscribe to the channel One Brain Four Wheels if you want to see more videos like this, um, or about my Suburban, or my family's Jeep Grand Cherokee, or just any other little videos about cars. And you can always leave comments below about what you'd like to see, and I'll try my best to make videos like that. And I really, I hope um, that you guys found this fun. Um, I know this really isn't, this isn't the same quality as Doug DeMuro, but I've been wanting to do this video for a long time, because like I said at the very beginning, uh, he's definitely been a big inspiration for me for starting this channel. And I wanted to do this as like an homage to him, and, and I know this isn't as good as him, but uh, definitely, you know, I work with the car that I have. I've got a C7 Corvette, so it's like, you know what? I'm going to do a Quirks and Features video of a C7 Corvette. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. And Doug, if you ever watch this video, I hope you enjoyed. Um, I hope it was up to your standard or as close as I could get to it. Um, but yeah, thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you next time.